All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. We are here in an interesting time because I am seeing drikpanchang.com. I am seeing the transit of Venus for this year. So Venus today, uh, as of today, he has entered the sign of Cancer, Karka Rashi. And then till 7th of July, Venus will be there. And on 7th, he is going to enter the sign of Leo. 7 July, so almost 5 weeks from now. But then on 7th of August, which is again another month, uh, he is going to re-enter Karkarashi. Okay? So Venus will be retrograde and he will enter Cancer again. And then uh, he's going to be there for quite some time. Okay, So till 1st of October, Venus will be there in the sign of Cancer again. So June, July, August, September, four months. We'll be going back and forth. Uh, Karka, Simha, like Cancer and Leo. So that means finally on 1st of October, it will enter Simha Rashi, Leo sign. And then from there, it will move forward. Okay. And then of course, it enters Kanya on 3rd November, Tula on 29 November and Vishik on 25th December. Okay. So this, this is the transit of Venus and it's very important to understand because uh, Venus is not a planet which goes retrograde very frequently, right? Uh, please let me know in, down in the comments for so how many days does Venus go retrograde and in how many months is there a retrograde cycle of Venus, okay? It's very important for us to understand. <clears throat> Now, what does Venus represent? Venus represents our ability to you know, feel things and um, exemplify the beauty, exemplify the externals, exemplify the luxury. Okay? It, it shows things which even if we do not have, uh, our life will not collapse. But it's good if you have, right? So Venus represents cars, luxury, perfume, uh, represents the opposite sex, uh, females in general, it represents the beauty industry, Hollywood, Bollywood, all woods. <laughs> so Venus is a very impor important planet and Venus deals with appearance, Venus deals with looks and Venus deals with how you feel about things basically. How is the look and feel, right? So when you go to a very luxurious hotel, what happens? The look and feel is very important. So people with very prominent Venus can work in uh, UI, UX design. I have seen, you know, exalted Venus or, you know, Venus in Lagna or Venus in the fourth sometimes, okay. Now this transit is very interesting because it's happening in an enemy sign. Venus does not like the sign of cancer. Well, it's very contradictory. If you see the energies of Moon and Venus, they're quite similar sometimes, right? Like both of them have, you know, love, affection and all this. But what is the difference between Moon and Venus? The difference is Moon is relatively more uh, selfless, okay? And Venus is relatively more transactional. That's the difference, which means whenever it comes to the Moon, which is the mother, the mind and emotions, especially the mother, there is higher capacity uh, that we... Uh, that a mother is selfless towards the child. And that is what the Vedic scriptures explain, that uh, the mother's love is the only love which is very close to selfless love. Okay, Or you could say which is very close to love. Okay, Because <laughs> love should ideally be selfless, but that is the you know, closest to love. But it is also not 100% love because... The scriptures say that a mother will love the child uh, almost <laughs> selflessly, but not 100% because why, why, why does she love the child uh, like to such an extent? Because in a way, she is bodily related to the child. Okay, Because if that love was selfless, uh, the mother or the father would have loved the neighbor's child also equally, but they don't, right? Because it's not their children. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Then you have Venus. Okay, Venus is uh, transactional. It's the sign of Libra, which is, you know, give and take. Okay, I do this for you, you do that for me, and then we are happy with each other or we are miserable, right? So, Moon is Satvic, Venus is Rajasic, okay, which means Moon 
uh, has more forgiveness inside. You know, a mother is always forgiving towards the child. You know, no matter how the child is, like even uh, in case of Mahabharat, we saw like when Gandhari, uh, like Duryodhana had approached Gandhari for a blessing, then she said, "Okay, uh, don't wear anything and just come in front of me, and you know, I'll open my uh, that patti, as they say." <laughs> And then she blessed him with like uh, Iron Man physique, right? Uh, so um, the, there is like abundant forgiveness. But with Venus, we don't see that, right? Very rarely will you see that a mother says, you know, oh, I want divorce from my child, you know, my son or daughter. Divorce in the sense like, you know, I want to cut off all ties. You know, it's like very, very, very rare. Very rarely is it seen. But with Venus, it is uh, quite frequently seen that people are ready to like, you know, cut off ties and uh, if things don't go well, they are ready to divorce, be separated or whatever, right? So that's the difference essentially. Uh, and therefore, now what's happening is uh, this planet uh, Venus is entering the sign of the moon, okay? And what happens when Venus enters the sign of the moon? So here what happens is Venus is forced uh, by the qualities of the moon to behave in a way that that essentially what moon represents, which is, you know, to be more selfless. Now, ideally, it should have been a good placement, right? So ideally, if you see, oh, it's very nice, right? Moon and Venus energies are together, but that's the problem. They are, they are enemies in astrology, right? So now how do you understand that they are enemies in astrology? And more importantly, uh, what happens in our life? You know, how, how does it impact our life? Okay. Now, when you say moon and Venus are enemies, uh, they're enemies because of the Tattva basically. So, one is Sattva Gun and one is Rajogun. Okay. So, Sattva and uh, Sattva Gun and Rajogun can never stay together. Now, one of them will take, uh, will come to the forefront. Okay. So, it's like a man is there, you know, he's married. So, he has the mother and he has his wife. Okay. So both are of different uh, nature and that is why there, there are clashes always between the wife and the mother. So therefore, because of the difference of Tattva, one says, you know, go and enjoy the world. One says, you know, no, go and forgive, you know, just be yourself. Don't, don't run too much behind materialistic pleasure. Okay. So just try to be happy within yourself. Just try to be happy uh for no reason sometimes. Like Venus always needs a reason to be happy. Venus always wants something to be happy. Venus always is looking for that external thing or that external reason to be happy. But Moon says, okay, even if you don't have anything, you should still be happy. Okay. But that, that, that is where the contradiction comes because Venus is not a planet which can be happy for no reason. That's the problem. So, uh, whenever Venus is transiting Cancer, you might feel that you are forced to kind of surrender to the to the universe, to God, to your destiny, law of karma, and let go of certain things um, because you cannot control the external. So that is the lesson for uh, the time when tr Venus transits into Cancer, that you cannot control the externals and learn to be happy for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it, it's like saying, okay, you, you are happy the way you are. I mean, that's what is the moon. But Venus thinks, oh, no, I have to be somebody. I have to become somebody. I have to get this. I have to get that. I have to get him. I have to get her. I have to get this pose, this position, this luxury, this car, this boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever. Only then I'll be happy. But moon says, no, you've got to learn to be happy without having any of that. And that, that is where the strain comes. So, Venus has to pretend as if he's happy without nothing. But, but, but deep down inside, he's not happy. Okay. So, that is where the challenge of uh, enemy signs comes. So, therefore, depending on your uh, horoscope, wherever, uh, depending on your lagna, whichever houses Venus rules in your chart, those houses will undergo this flavor. Okay, so, for example, if Venus is your 10th Lord, for example, then this can mean that uh, there are certain circumstances around you which, uh, which are compelling you to surrender to God and understand that maybe these things will change or will not change. Or even if they change, 
they will not change now but maybe in the near future they may change or they may not change okay so they may change now or they may change later or they may never change but you have to make peace with that okay so that is what uh, is the lesson of venus uh, in cancer that things may not be as you expect and you are still responsible uh, for doing your duty okay so therefore if you are feeling that this energy is uh, forcing you to be more detached, more compassionate, more forgiving, well, then I would say best is to embrace this energy and not just uh, dismiss it in the name of, you know, enemy sign or something like that. Because you have to remember cancer is a very divine sign because it is the sign where Jupiter gets exalted, right? So Jupiter is exalted uh, till five degrees of cancer okay so therefore do not think that this is oh yeah yeah this is some you know fancy uh, sign you know no, it's not like that okay it is the sign ruled by the moon the moon is the most important planet whenever you say nakshatra it is the moon's nakshatra okay i mean of course the there is surya nakshatra lagna nakshatra and all other things but Dashas are calculated. Vimshotri Dasha is calculated from the moon, the nakshatra of the moon. So can you believe it, how important this planet is? Okay, so therefore, do not dismiss this in the name of, you know, whatever, some fancy enemy sign or something like, you know, oh, it's a bad placement. No, it, it is not. Because if you see, from a Tattva perspective, Venus is in Rajogun and moon, as you know, is in Sattvogun. And Rajogun is lower than Sattvogun. Okay, so moon is... In a higher spiritually, it is more, uh, it, it, it's in a higher dignity than Venus. Okay. But of course, if you see in terms of benefit uh, nature, then Venus is uh, a greater benefit, benefit because it makes life relatively more easier with, you know, luxuries and all, all other things. As uh, Parashara says, you know, Venus is greater. Uh, but you have to understand at a spiritual level, at a non-mundane level, at a divine sense, at an esoteric level, you know, the moon represents bhakti yoga, spirituality and absorption and attraction towards God. And that is what the moon represents. Uh, and the moon exemplifies the highest level of teachings of the Bhagavad Gita, which is Sarva Dharma Antparityaja, Maam Ekam Sharanam Raja, Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Isham Masuchaha. Right, abandon all varieties of religion and surrender unto me. I'll deliver you from all suffering. Do not fear, O Arjuna. This is what Lord Krishna says to Arjuna. Right, so the, it, it's like you surrender to God uh, and He will take care of you. Right, so just like Lord Krishna took care of Arjuna, uh, He took care of so many. <laughs> Right, so therefore, the way he has taken care, like Lord Narsingh Dev has taken care of Pralal Maharaj. So therefore, um, we need to read these stories and inculcate this wisdom within us. Then we will realize how great and divine and powerful and beautiful and amazing uh, the Lord is. So wh wh when we realize this, then we can appreciate uh, placements or transits of planets in Cancer. Okay, But then the problem is because the Rajas element is there, the expectation is there in the background. Ah, oh, I wish I could have this. Which is fine. I mean, you, you will have expectations. But we, we have to understand that we got to live with it. All right. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for your patience. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to down below. And for consultations, my website is also down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.